Ned Kelly, a man synonymous with freedom and the bush. A man considered a criminal by some and a hero by others. This is the story of the most famous Australian bush ranger, Ned Kelly. Ned Kelly was born in 1854 to Irish-born parents living in northern Victoria. His family wasn't a rich one and struggled to get by. During his childhood, Ned would save a young boy from drowning in a local river. For this action, he was awarded a green sash, which he wore often including during his last stand. Ned's father passed away a year after he was released from prison, forcing Ned to become the man of the house. At the age of 14, Ned would meet bushranger Harry Power and become an apprentice in the art of bushranging. During his teenage years, Ned Kelly started to commit crimes such as horse robbery and theft. This landed him several small stints in prison, however, after being released from prison in 1874, he attempted to make an honest living in lumber. This eventually failed and Ned found himself committing crimes once more. The infamous Fitzpatrick incident occurred one night when Police Constable Fitzpatrick came to the Kelly household with an arrest warrant for Ned. There are different accounts on what happened next. Fitzpatrick's story went that when he attempted to arrest Ned, he was shot and then forced to remove the bullet wound before fleeing back to the station. In contrast, Kelly's story was that he wasn't even home so he couldn't have shot him and that Fitzpatrick faked the injury in order to further incriminate Ned. Regardless of which story was true, a 100 pound bounty was placed on Ned. Ned and his brother Dan fled into the bush where they were later joined by Joe Byrne and Steve Hart. Whilst these men were hiding from police, Ned's mother would be arrested and sent to jail for her involvement in the alleged crime. This action became a defining moment for Ned and garnered public support for the Kelly family. Whilst the newly formed Kelly gang was hiding in the bush, they ambushed a police search party killing Constable Lonigan and Constable Scanlan in the process. After this attack, the Kelly gang brought the fight to the police by robbing banks and evading them. The signature style of these robberies is very interesting as they always made conversation with the bank workers and often provided drinks and a very friendly environment. It is also important to note that during these bank robberies, not only did the gang steal gold and money, but also destroyed the mortgage contracts of the citizens, effectively setting them free from debt. These actions, combined with the perceived injustice suffered from the police, made the Kelly Gang popular with the people. The Kelly Gang's final stand occurred in 1880 when they robbed the town of Glen Rowan and rounded up all the citizens into the local hotel. Knowing that police reinforcements would soon arrive from Melbourne, they destroyed the rail line, hoping it would kill most of the police officers. In the hotel, the citizens were provided with drink, music, dance and conversation. After it became apparent the train would not be arriving on that day, the gang let the citizens return to their homes. The next day, as ordered, the citizens went back to the hotel, however, one of them went to the destroyed rail and alerted the upcoming police train to the incoming danger. The police approached the hotel on foot and then the shootout began. The Kelly gang quickly put on their famous steel armour and began to fire back at police. After a day of fighting, the Kelly gang allowed the civilian hostages to leave. In the fog of the new morning, an ironclad Ned Kelly arose from the bush behind police lines firing at him. With bullets bouncing off his armour, he appeared to be unstoppable. However, a well-placed shot to the leg took Ned down. He was arrested and sent to Melbourne jail to be hung. In November 1880, Ned Kelly was hung in Melbourne jail. His last words are disputed, but the most agreed upon version states that his last words were, such is life. The legacy of Ned Kelly is one of debate. Some people consider him a common crook, plain and simple, whilst others see him a Robin Hood-like figure. Regardless of your belief, it is undeniable that Ned Kelly is a part of the Australian culture and an important figure in its history.